Good evening, everyone. Hi, Thank Karen. you for coming out tonight to the Flint Library. We have a very, very special program this evening. Uh, I'd like to thank the friends and volunteer organization uh, for the refreshments and for all of the things they do to make events like this possible. Tonight is a very different event. As you know, we at the library strive to have programs that everyone can enjoy. No matter what the age, we have something for everyone. So I am very, very happy and proud to announce tonight um, Charlie Moore, you may know who he is. He has Charlie Moore Outdoors, his show, um, their top-rated show on Nesson. And I was going to go into a big, long introduction, but uh, I'm going to reel it in for now. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, and I'm just going to introduce, because I know you'd like to hear his stories and meet him. So please welcome Charlie Moore. Show called Front Row. Did anyone remember that show, Front Row at all? 
See? <laughs> no, that's your son. <laughs> it was a sports magazine show on Nesson called Front Row. It was hosted by Tom Karen. And Tom and I, Krista Mastriani. So it was Krista Mastriani, Tom Karen, and I. So the longest people on Nesson to this day so far on air has been is Tom Karen and myself. We've been there, um, well, since 1996. How did you get there? I don't know. I have no clue. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> but don't tell anyone. <laughs> I don't have any uh, education when it comes to college. I don't have a college education. Uh, I uh, barely passed uh, high school. I think they just let me go. <laughs> Not the kids in here, you know, like you, you should get an education when your parents tell you, hey, get an education, get an education, get a college education. But really, it's a bunch of crap. I'm not swearing, I'm not swearing, you've all heard on, you know, rugby and Nickelodeon. <laughs> um, college education, kids, and adults, as you all know, it's what you do with it, it's what you make of it. So if you have a college education, we all know people in our schools that have done eight years, 12 years of school, and they've done nothing, and then know other people have done high school, and they've done everything. So it goes, it goes both ways, really, at the end of the day. But I started, um, and I, I, I totally will sidetrack my stories. It's like I, I start talking about education from a person who has a high school diploma. Oh, golf. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, but whatever, it's all good. <laughs> But uh, the show started in 1996. It never was supposed to be a fishing show. It never has, it never has been a fishing show. It never, I never wanted it to be a fishing show. So I love to fish. I'm a guy from Boston who loves to fish. But, you know, I, I have a problem with other dudes telling me like, what to do and when to do it. Like, I'm the guy that drives around for five days and gets lost, and I never will ask anyone for directions. Like, I got really mad when they came out with MapQuest. I was like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> now he's in my phone! It's right here! At least before you could physically have to pull over and stop and roll your window down. <laughs> now it's like right on your phone. So, what it was, was when I went to, when I went to Ness and I, I asked them uh, to do inter an interview show. To, like, do, you know, a studio show. And uh, they really liked my personality. They thought I was uh, pretty messed up. <laughs> they thought I'd be perfect for TV. And so, uh, <laughs> so I said, I said, I go, hey, listen, I go, you know, I, I, I'm not really like a studio sit down kind of guy. I said, so I'm thinking, like, I love the fish, and I got this boat that I haven't paid for yet. <laughs> so, I probably won't. I'll probably cut my credit card after I buy some more shit. <laughs> Stuff. Sorry. Stuff. <laughs> um, and so I said, can I take them on the boat and interview them? And they were like, yeah. So that's how it kind of evolved. It was supposed to be like me in the studio, you know, uh, 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 assaulting these guys, you know? You know, and, and, and interviewing them after a game or before a game or what have you. And it ended up being like, well, let me take them on my boat. Let's go on the boat and let's talk to them on the boat. And so we did that. And the show just kind of evolved, and it kind of just started to take its own form and its own shape, and and um, and so we really did a great job, and people loved it for whatever unmistakable reason. I don't know why here. You people are weird. <laughs> <laughs> when when people like me, I know they're weird. That's cool. There's a lot of weird people. The ratings are great. <laughs> we have questions along the way. Absolutely. Um, on your show, what's your what's the biggest fish you ever caught? Were you, and you were, were you surprised? Like, did you catch like a six pounder or something? I'm like surprised that? when I catch anything. That's why I'm so happy. <laughs> 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 I'm <a> real. <laughs> but if you had to put it in, in fisherman's terms, when you fish on TV, let me just let me, let me answer that a couple. When you fish on TV and you're fishing for your 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 your, your, your good fishing, you know how to fish, which I definitely do. I mean, I but you're different when you're alone. When I'm alone, I got my crew, we got three boats, the crew, the set's closed. I don't want anyone around me because people, they all, you know, they talk and I'm trying to work. It's like being in an office and there's dude, dude, your friends there talking to you about like, what are you guys doing this weekend? It's like, Jesus, seriously? Come on, go get here's 20 bucks, get a sub and a haircut while you're at it. <laughs> so, but the biggest fish I ever caught on TV was three fish that were over 10 pounds for bass. One 14 pounds and two that were 10. But I mean, you're talking about a span of, Come on, are you guys looking for this library? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. <laughs> but if you're talking about, <laughs> if you're talking about like, um, to, to, to be able to say the, 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 the big fish, I mean a big largemouth bass, you know, three fish over 10 pounds, but you're talking about a span of, uh, I've been on TV since 1996. I mean, I've hosted several shows. I know we're in New England, you know, and you guys know me from Nesson. Some of you might know me from ESPN, Beach Alley Moore. That was like their biggest show on ESPN for nine years. I did 96 episodes of that. I've done the first ever original Nesson show called Roughing It. I was the first person on ESPN to have their name in the title. No one ever had their name, Beach Alley Moore. It was always because ESPN is the biggest, they're the biggest gorilla in the room. The 800 pound gorilla. Everything was ESPN. And for like a year, we held out on the contract because they wanted to name the show B ESPN. And I was like, listen, just so you know, I'm not ESPN. <laughs> now, if you want to pay me like I'm ESPN, my name's Charlie Moore. So they were like, that was the first you know, name of the title. So there's so many firsts, you know, first original show. But over the years, to be able to uh, uh, catch those fish, uh, those are the biggest bass. And sometimes what you don't see on TV, Hulk Hogan. I got one hour to fish. Tom Brady, I got 45 minutes on the water to fish. Just saying, you go out there and it's like you're not there from, hey, I'm getting there at 7 in the morning, I got my little thermos of coffee and stuff. I'm going to be hanging out for about 12 hours. So you, you, you go, you go. You, you're, you're, it's, a, it's a machine and you get on the water and you just, you go. So three fish over, over around over 10 pounds in Massachusetts. One was Alabama, one was Florida, and none, none were Massachusetts. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, yeah. I'm I'm Massachusetts, I'd be, I have my own like, statue right now. <laughs> <laughs> I do expect one, though. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, what? I'm sorry, what? Who, who was the first man of you out in the water that you did? Mm. That's a really good question. <clears throat> so, the first interview on the water that I did, this is hilarious. It's, 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 I got, it's a little bit of a, a long story, but I'll, I'll give you the long, short version, but it'll end up being long, trust me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it was Harry Sinden and Johnny Busick. Now, for the kids that don't know Harry Sinden and Johnny Busick, Harry Sinden was a longtime coach of the Bruins, and Harry was the president of the team. And, you know, and, then, and then, obviously, the Busick was, was number nine, you know, obviously, the chief. So we went out to Lake Winnipesaukee, and I, when I kid you not, it was early, early May. And when I kid you not, it snowed. <laughs> that was the first interview. So we go in the water, we're out there the whole day, we're not, it's not happening. It's not happening. We're not getting anything, and I am just, my arm is coming off. Every time my cat's coming off, come back. Every time coming off, come on. I'm just chucking, chucking, chucking. Spot, 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 moving, moving, moving. And finally here is like, I looked over and there was Johnny and Harry and they were like, they had like, I think, they had, I, they had ice cubes coming off their friggin' hat. <laughs> like, they were frozen. <laughs> and, and I said, and I, I, go, I said, hey, I'm sorry, man, I really am sorry. I know you guys, and Harry said, oh, thank, oh, thank you, thank you. Is this Bacher? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And Harry said to me, Harry said, um, Charlie, eh? we're Canadian, you know? We're Canadian, you know? This is warm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I want to fix because this is going to freak you out because no one really knows this story. This is a true story. So we're, we're just, we're just, we're, we're done. So I'm like, I, obviously being guys and girls and, you know, you've got a competitive ego, I'm like, I haven't caught anything. I'm like, this is bull. So we get back in this little cut and I go, I always get one here. So I pull over and I start casting and I get this spinnerbait over a rock pile and sure enough, like a three pound smallie hits this bait and I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> God damn, Jesus is Canadian. <laughs> so I, I get the fish in the boat and I'm thinking like, you know, we have a show now because I got the fish. I'm like, yeah, look at this here, look at this. The producers are like, yeah, so this show's over. <laughs> It was just too, everyone was cold, it was boring. 
pouring, pouring rain, snow, hail, everything. It was like that 44 degree, you know, where everything's <laughs> happening. But I will tell you one thing, and I gotta tell you this, this is a this this is a story that goes into this, the name. I will tell you one thing. The guys, Canadians, if anyone's been with the Canadians and you've been golfing or fishing with Canadians, we had to have a whole boat for the smoked fish and the friggin' sausage. And the, and the cold cuts. Johnny Pearson was rolling over like this, like, hey, Charlie, I got my tackle box. It's like a, it was the size of the hand. I had more food in there than in Hannaford. <laughs> I thought we had to get another boat just for the food. <laughs> so the Canadians can eat. <laughs> so we get back to the shore. And Harry's a pretty good guy. He's a really good guy. They're crazy, though. They really are crazy Canadians, you know? And Johnny Busick's crazy. So we go to this little bar. We like a Wasaki, you know? We all get some beers. We're hanging out. We get some, we're sitting at the table. We're just talking stories. And I, I said, I said, I said, I, love you. I said, I go, you guys want to talk some fish stories about that one fish we caught? What do you guys think? We got one fish. What do you, what do you guys got for stories? So we're talking about the whole day. And this guy, who was a Bruins fan, he was over at a table with his other buddies, and he starts, you guys all know where I'm going with this, right? He starts busting up on Harry. Because, you know, he's chirping at Harry. So I'm like, and I'm here over here like this, I'm like this, and I, 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 I'm letting it go. I'm, letting, I'm cool about it, you know, I'm like, whatever. But Harry's cool about it, too, and you know, whatever. So finally, the guy's getting a little, you know, you got one beer, you got two beers. Next thing you know, it's like, the, by the third beer, you, you know, it's, it's like, you, you, you're getting to be too much. I said to the guy, I go, yo, bro, you got to go, yo, come on, sit me down, relax, have some respect. I, so, so I turn around, he goes, and he starts in on me. Well, that's where I get really pissed off. I can give a shit about Harry. No, 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 So I said to the guy, I go, listen, here's the deal. I go, say something again, I'm going to smash your face off your bowl of peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> Turn around, dude says something, I didn't walk, I flew over. <laughs> I did the whole office linebacker off the chair and just started choking the dude out in the bar. <laughs> Swear to God. So the cops came and I was like, officer, take him away! <laughs> They tell the whole network what happened. They're like, this guy is awesome. <laughs> like, you've got a scene that he can care less. Like, he's on TV, he didn't care. So Tom Karen, before he goes on the show, 30 minutes is getting all this. So he goes on the network. I'm sitting at home by now. I'm in my chair. I'm probably 16 beers deep. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. 14, sorry. <laughs> OK, 12. So I sit in the chair, and I'm in my home, and I got the TV on, and then Tom Karen says, Nesson's own mad fisherman. And I was like, call the copyright lawyer. <laughs> yep, oh yeah, that's, that's going to make me millions. <laughs> and to this day, Tom is pissed off. <laughs> that's how the name, the mad fisherman, came from. That's the true story about me and bar fight and Harry Dial. This guy's mad. John's like, he's the mad fisherman. <laughs> so, what do you, what do you, I'm sorry, your hand was up? Oh, yeah. I was about, about four hours ago, your hand was up. Great, great story. Uh, who's, who's the best athlete fisherman? Like, mm. someone who really knows this stuff. When it comes to pure fishing, it's, I mean, it's, it's, you can go best and worst. <laughs> and have more worse. Um, the best, I mean, I'm not just saying this. I'm going to start off with a guy who's a uh, Maine native. He coached the New York Islanders for, I think, four years. Uh, uh, he, went, he was drafted by Toronto Maple Leafs. His name is Jack Capuano. And he's the, he's, the rock, he's the Islanders coach. Now he's the assistant coach for the Florida Panthers. Unbelievable fisherman. Tim Wakefield. Brilliant. And Tim is competitive as competitive can be. Like when you get a redfish and Tim's like, you son, oh, 
Like he's mad. <laughs> like he's mad. Like he's angry. Um, but hands down, I mean, I, I, I'm not just saying this to say this, but Bobby Orr, Bobby Orr is just one of those athletes that just everything he does is great. Everything he does is um, amazing. But as far as like the worst, <laughs> you got Drew Bledsoe. <laughs> you cast out like this, and he's going like this with his reel. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I go, you are a professional football player. What the hell are you doing? Yeah. Who's the, your favorite person who you interviewed? Mm. Oh man, that's a good question. What's your name? Drew. Drew. Oh, okay, I won't say Drew Bledsoe. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's a tough question. There's so many of them. I, I'm, you know, I'm gonna go way, way, way outside the air though. But you'll look it up and Google it. But um, I mean, for me personally, I mean, there's so many people I've interviewed over the years. I can't even begin to tell you. But I'm gonna have to say Batman, Adam West. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Batman, Batman Adam West was, was, so I was on probation, long story, for network, <laughs> for network I was on probation because of something I did, and who knows, and, and so they said, listen, Batman's coming on the show, and I said, all right, and he's like, you know, we, we really want you to be in your best behavior, I'm like, all right, I will, <laughs> I will, and so we went to a swamp, and it was November, so it's again, the cold, these are the things that people don't realize, on, you guys don't realize on TV, it's like when they gotta go, they go. And you don't, you're not going when the fishing's great. It's like you gotta make it happen, you know? When they, when it's a, when they, when they, when they can go. So he, he comes out from uh, Fishkill, which is I think Fishkill is Idaho, right? It's Fishkill, Idaho? Yeah, thanks for your help everybody, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Fishkill, New York. Yeah, New York. There's a no, New York, New York but it's right. Idaho, the Fishkill River in Idaho, or Fish, Okay, so he came from Idaho. <laughs> so he lands, and the lim a limousine picks him up in Manchester, drives him up, and he comes, he, the, the limo rolls up, and we're all sitting there waiting for him, and he, he, he gets out of the car. <laughs> I says, Adam, Batman. Charlie, was Charlie. Charlie. I'm like, shit, you're Batman. <laughs> Where the hell is this game? <laughs> he's like this, he's like, Charlie O'Ward, Charlie O'Ward. He's that deep boy, you know, that Adam West voice. I says, I want to have one question for you. How was sex with Cal? Oh <laughs> <laughs> he stops. <laughs> that looks like you. And they 
chained it underneath it and they wenched it and it barely it barely made it through. So they did it once in all like motion, slow motion, like this, and then they were in the car like running and when it got to a certain point they would jump in. And then that's why they would speed it up. There was only one take for every time the car went out, it was the same take. <laughs> And that's when I said, Batman don't know shit. <laughs> you got your own belt. Like, you're a bad belt. The bet you just beam up stuff and crap. <laughs> he had so many stories. <laughs> he talked about working with the Three Stooges. I was blown away by that. Because I, I was just totally blown away by that. But, um, yeah, that was a great question. You see, we, everyone got a good charge at it. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice, bro. It's nice. Yeah, it's a good question. But Batman, you know Batman like Batman, right? You need to find out about, about, about Adam West. He was, uh, they, they call him the classic Batman. So, oh, I gotta go, they're coming from the night. I in town. So, you've, you've um, had, my wife's telling me to stand up. I have no idea why. But. <laughs> Your Honor. Um, <laughs> so, you met with a lot of athletes, a lot of egos, I think, right, in today's day and age, who are maybe a couple of the most down to earth, genuine, sincere athletes. Yeah, great question. First of all, nobody even remotely does a show of me if they're not good people. I don't, I don't, I mean, they've all been good people. I've never had anybody on the show that I don't really like or honor or respect. I'm not forced to do any shows. I don't pay any of the guests to do any shows. I've never paid anyone to do any shows. They don't pay me to do any shows. I make all the money from drug smuggling. <laughs> <laughs> Business is booming. <laughs> but, um, you know, the, the, the most down to earth players are the, are the hockey players. Yeah, I, was thinking that. I mean, you know, they really are humble, uh, great guys. Uh, but they're all great guys. I mean, I don't, I don't really do any shows, like I said, with people that... There's been a few guests that we've had booked, and they were, you know, they were cool, and we got on the phone, we had a little interview, and I'd be like, you know, you just come up with the whole I can't do it kind of thing, because they were just not, you know, they're very... Whether they're strong personalities, or they just think they know how to do TV, or what, I don't know what their the demands are, but... The whole purpose of the show is to have fun, to get to know the guests, to get to know the area, to incorporate the food, kind of the history, you know, it's not like a how-to fishing show. The show is always about a guy from Boston who likes to fish. People from Boston think they know everything. Yeah. Like they think that we run the world starting from Boston this way. And New York's not in front of us. New York's, we're over here. New York's over here. Like it's running down this way. So we think like, so the whole perspective of how we do things basically in New York and Boston is everyone should do, do it my way. Do it this way. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Nobody really from Ohio does that. You know what I mean? No, they don't really critique you like we do. So that, 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 that was the whole purpose of the sh uh, uh, show. Uh, interviewing the guests, um, they tend to open up more, but I would, I would have them open up if we were cooking, if we were in the locker room. It's just my personality. I'm just asking questions and I'm respectful, but I'm not looking for like the shock kind of style of hosting. It's more genuine. It's more from a Frank fan's point of view. It's more from what I like about sports and growing up from Boston and watching sports thinking you know sports. I never do research. That's why some of the stuff that I do on the show, it's like we air it, it's genuine, but I'm not. Like one time I was out with Joe Jordan and I said to Joe, we're fishing. I said, Joe, listen, I want to congratulate you on this year's MVP. And everyone was like, like the whole, you, you, you could hear that. I looked at him, I go, what's up? He goes, John, I came in second. I go, well, that's just wrong, isn't it? <laughs> That is so wrong! <laughs> so I'm like, an idiot! <laughs> so, I mean, you know, the genuineness, of, the genuineness of the interview is important. I think that one thing about TV that I try to get people to realize about me is whether you meet me here on the street, wherever I am, in the airport, you know, it's just, that's real. It's just like who I am. This is what I do. I can't spell. I can't add. I don't know much about school, but when it comes to entertainment and, and talking to people, it's it's my gift, uh, and that's you know what I do. Uh, some of the some of the genuine people, they've all been great people, great genuine interviews, timely. Ray Allen, Ray Allen wins the you know wins the world championship. You know they always say I'm going to going to Disneyland, and they say I'm I'm sitting at home watching the TV, 
my kids are all there, and they say to Ray, Ray, go to Disney. He goes, no, I'm going to go fish with Jolly Moore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's, that's, that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, you look like you have a blast with Bill Lee on the show. Any good Bill Lee stories that you can share? <laughs> I thought I was messed up. <laughs> He's genuinely very, very calculated in what he does. He's odd, but he's an odd calculated, you know, he's odd, odd mannerisms, and odd, but he's so calculated. And um, he's got so many stories, he's so genuine. The only Bill Lee story that he can tell you to sum it up, the Bill Lee thing, this is, this is God's speed truth, this is... I can't, you can't even make this story up. Any of the stories, I like, tell you that you can't, you can't make up because it's really what happened, but they're like, what? We were in Vermont. We fished a lake called Seymour Lake, way up in Vermont. I never really fished a lake before. A lot of the lakes I go on to fish, I've never been on before. I'm on it the first time I'm fishing for a show with the boats and the crew and everything, so it's a little, you know, you're, just, you're actually fishing it for the first time. So we're on Seymour Lake. Two things happen with Bill Lake. Okay. So Bill and I get out of the bed and breakfast. We come down and we go to the boat ramp. This is this is unbelievable. We have three boats. They're all identical. The Obershawn boats. They're all orange and green. You can't miss them. So I get on one boat and I walk off and I hit the motor and then the crews get on. We got three camera guys, two producers, and whoever else uh, uh, we have for that day. So we're all trolling out this way. I'm talking to the guys like this. And we're looking like this. So we're talking this like this. I think Bill's on my boat. <laughs> right? And there was a hill. There was a hill. But there was a hill. There was a hill. There was a hill. Okay, shall I? So there's a hill. And all of a sudden I hear this. I'm like, I turn around and goes, it's Billy. He goes, I'm going to get an egg sandwich. <laughs> what? So the guy started yelling at my producer, you said he was in the boat. He was, yeah, he was in the boat, and then he jumped out of the boat. You didn't even tell me. It went 20 feet from the shore. He's, not, he's probably not even coming back. <laughs> so, we, so we sit there, and we're just trolling around. I'm fishing a little bit, you know, seeing what the fishing's like. He literally comes back an hour later. An hour later. Worst part is, no egg sandwiches. <laughs> Bill, I thought you were bringing some egg sandwiches. Oh, I had the best egg sandwich up there. Oh, so you had an egg sandwich. <laughs> he says to me, um, you're not going to believe this. I just met Babe Ruth's nephew. I'm like, you're right, I don't believe it. <laughs> He's got these pictures of him with Babe Ruth's nephew that he met at an egg sandwich in Seymour, Vermont. <laughs>
That's how I, 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 I go out, I, I sweat, I lose 10 pounds, I look good, I'm like, yeah, I don't have to work out, look at this. Just sweat all the time. <laughs> so, I don't look good, I'm sorry. That's that too bad, right? Sure, 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 sure. So, Bill comes off the water, we go down to the baseball field, which is literally down the street. A couple local guys want to play us, they want a charity thing. It's me and Bill, I'm pitching against Bill, yada, yada, yada. All of a sudden, Bill starts to take off his shirt. And he starts to unbuckle his pants. And I'm sitting there going, oh, this up. <laughs> I don't know where this is going, but this is TV. <laughs> he literally has a baseball uniform on from 1908. Whoa. <laughs> He's had it on all day. <laughs>
you become like, you know, a, a stereotype of what you're good at. So for me to be able to branch out and say, you know, I want to do different TV programs uh, with like Behind the Bee and, and, and uh, uh, Ruins Academy, and then they became very successful. Uh, that was a big uh, uh, plus for me. I went to LA and did my own sitcom called Mad Fish. Um, it was like a home improvement meets coach, like Craig T. Nelson. <laughs> and it was great, but LA finds a way of taking something really, really good and turning it into really, really sucky. <laughs> so I got in an argument with some of the producers because I walked on the set and I'm like, you guys like you're ruining my jokes. <laughs> like you're ruining my thing. You just it's not genuine. To your point about genuine, I'm totally they were making me this is hilarious. I said to the producers, I said, you're making me a watered-down version of Tim Allen. And then Tim Allen bought the show. <laughs> well, there you go. So Last Man Standing is my show. He bought my show. Outdoor writer, you know, he's a guy's guy. It was hilarious. I actually called him out on it. I said, you're making me a watered-down Tim Allen. And Tim's like, I'll buy it. <laughs> So, I mean, there's talks about a sitcom with the Bruins right now, with me and the Bruins, or maybe Netflix. I want to be the first sitcom on TV history to do a sitcom but have the real players, like, in the sitcom. Mm -hmm. So have, like, Char and stuff. Imagine me telling Char, you suck at defense. <laughs> You're never going to be able to play defense. You're like Big Bird on skates. <laughs> You're never going to make it in the NHL, man. And he's been playing for, like, you know, 18 years. <laughs> So having the real players in the sitcom would be cool, not like a cameo, but real, you know, real appearances and stuff like that. So, you know, TV is uh, has been good to me, but at the end of the day, you know, I've always prided myself on doing what I do as as, as, the, as as the person that you know. I love to fish. I love catching fish. I'm crazy. I get mad. I might break my rod. I might be unconventional. I really don't care. If you don't like me, then gong show it. Turn the channel. It's like this. Because I got news for you. I, I love me. <laughs> I'm going to watch it all day long. So, so there's that. <laughs> so. Where's your favorite place to fish? Yeah, you know, there's so many, there's so many cool places to fish. I'm going to have to say, like, I love Lake Winnipesaukee because of the, because of the location of where it is. Did you think Lake Winnipesaukee? Uh, yeah. You like it there? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I like it because of the uh, proximity to Boston and everything around you. But for pure bass, pure uh, uh, you know, species of fish, you, you're not going to get any better fishery in the, in the country. I don't care what anyone says in Lake Champlain. Yes! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 What is fun? <laughs> How many species in one day have you caught fishing for bass, sir? You caught nine. I have no idea. We caught like nine. And there? Yeah. One oh day, yeah. Nine yeah. I mean, I have no idea. I don't. I'm like, I don't. I don't know. That that that, that lake is just absolutely amazing. If you've never been there yet, there's some good food now along the along the air routes and stuff, and there's some good you know places to visit and stuff. But but uh, uh, Lake Champlain is definitely um, is definitely uh, one of the best fishes in the country. Uh, when you go down to Florida or different parts of the of the of the uh, country, everything fishes a little differently. Uh, there's you know different styles of water. You know, up here there's a lot of glacial lakes, and down there's a lot of swamp, you know, swamp kind of lakes. And, but uh, as far as you know, overall, that's my my favorite place. I mean, and back to the shows, it's all about just entertaining people and having fun. I mean, you know, I, I, if you haven't fished, then you know, then you you haven't really enjoyed life. I mean, it's, it's, I think fishing's cool with your kids and your family, just hanging out, being on a boat. Um, I love being with people when they they've caught you know catching their very first fish. It's like that that cool experience. But just being on the lake or the ocean and just kind of floating around, and uh, usually the girls go out in bikinis. <laughs> and usually the guys are in speedos. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's just uh, just a fun kind of relaxing kind of uh, way to enjoy, uh, you know, enjoy it, uh, your life. And I think the fishing's been, it's been good to me. Um, I think doing shows about like how to, it's, it never was my style. My style was always about just entertaining and having fun and what it is that we do, um, but uh, we definitely enjoy uh, the fishing aspect of it. But, um, I do want to tell you a quick little story. You know, you all know Sharon? <laughs> yeah, hello. <laughs> she set the whole thing up. Yeah. So I got to tell you how that happened. The truth. I was at Davio's 
I'll give you the short version. I was at Davio's, and Sharon came up to me at the bar, and we started talking. I was talking. I was talking to Sharon. If you don't laugh at that, you have problems. He's like, I hate that guy for no reason at all. And that's kind of funny. I'm just throwing it up. And Sharon came over, and we started talking. And, and, um, and you know, she said what she did, and we talked a little bit about it. And I told Sharon, hey, you know, I, you know, you should you want to come out and talk at the library? I said, yeah, you know, I, I'll do that. Um, we get asked to do a lot of different things, and I said, you know, I, I'd like to do that. And um, her boyfriend started talking to me, and I was with my friends. And, excuse me, kids, you can close your ears a little bit, but I see him up. When I said, Sharon, I'm going to come, but I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get her on. Your, your, your boyfriend's a bit of a douchebag. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. 
I think it's what people do. I think that yeah. when I first started doing it, when I was on ESPN, first show came out, we did split screens, we would do, we would do it was so unconventional. The ESPN got more hate mail from my show than any other show. <laughs> <laughs> I landed after two episodes in Florida, I walked out the terminal, I got my cell phone, you have the big cell phone like this, hello? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> and the guy goes, hey, Charlie. I go, hey, what's up, Jerry? He goes, yeah, so the, the, the numbers are in for this weekend. I go, oh, good. He goes, well, let me tell you about the, 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 the emails, because there was no social media in 2003. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got 36,000 emails. I go, oh. <laughs> he says, like, 30,000 of them hate you. <laughs> 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 I said, what about the other 6,000? He goes, well, 4,000 don't know what to think of you. <laughs> okay, well, we got well, 2,000. Yeah, they don't like you either. <laughs> so he said, they, they were like, what, a, what an absolute hit. The 36,000 people ran to their freaking computers and sent an email to date. <laughs> they were like, this kid, they, got, they signed the contract for a new season right there. <laughs> they were like, this is insane. So, I mean, you know, it's just... Um, <clears throat> It's just everyday things that we did, the new things that we did. We were the first ones to do hip hop for, in the show, split screen, fast play, small cameras. Uh, you know, everybody started the show in fishing on the water and ended it on the water. I started from the day I left my house. The whole travel, the whole thing, what we, what, what, what we do. So uh, these fans, like, he's, in, he's on TV, he's not even on a boat. He's walking around. He's walking around the shore. I said, yeah, but it's right by my hotel. I can go right to my hotel, right to the shore, and right to the bar, and right to dinner, and right to the hotel. I don't even need a replica. It's beautiful. When you were golfing, when you were golfing. I suck at golf. I know. <laughs> I hate watching myself on TV play golf, because I'm like, that is real, but I really suck. <laughs> Turn the chair. But, but the point is, the point is, it's, it's, so here's a story, Florida. This is a really good story. For, the, for all you know, Kirk Audi. Mm -hmm. Kirk Audi, the, the new American sportsman. I come in, he started kind of the new American sportsman on ABC, for the kids that don't know. He's kind of the one that started the outdoor TV thing. So I get to the, the Chica Lodge in Alamorada, Florida. And I was fishing all day, and it was hot. I mean, obviously, it's, it was summertime. It's hot. I mean, I'm white, but I was burned as a go. I was the lobster. I just needed a shower and some aloe. <laughs> <laughs> so I get to the thing, the, the bell hops and cha 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 this is an hour and wait for it. He, well, he wants to talk to you. I says, no, I I I I I go, I go, I'm like this, I go, I can't talk to you. No, but I'm dying. You're running here, you need to you need to talk to him. He wants to talk to you. So I lean over like this, I look down the aisle, and it's like a long aisle, if you've been down there before. And I'm sitting over there, I start looking at the silhouette, and it's, I go, that kind of looks like Kirk Howdy. So I go to the camera guys, I go, roll. I go, just roll, just let's go. And they follow me. So we walk down, I sit down, and Kurt says to me, hey, you know, have a seat. So I sat down, and he says, hey. And he starts talking to me. Now, here, here it is. I'm, this is a guy that you grew up with. You don't know what he's going to think of the new style. You know, you don't know if you're a home run pitcher versus, you know, a home run hitter versus a, a single hitter in baseball. So you don't know what he's going to say. And he says to me, long story short, he says to me, um, I said to him, he was smoking a cigar. And I was jealous, I wanted a cigar. And he says to me, and I go, I know a cigar you're smoking right now, Mr. Gow. He goes, he goes, no you don't. <laughs> yeah, I do. He goes, what is it? I go, it's a griffin. He goes, that's well played. <laughs> I, knew exactly, I knew exactly the cigar was smoking. He was blown away by that. And then, I, um, and then he said to me, he said, um, I just want to let you know, I started the New American Sportsman. He goes, but what you've done is you've taken this thing and you've created this whole new genre where everyone's going to copy you now. And he goes, i got to give you a lot of credit for that. He goes, you're, you've done an unbelievable job. And I said, yeah. And then I said, Thank you very much, Mr. God. He goes, I can't believe Grady left Pedro in. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I went to Joe Fish.
that, that's, no, it wasn't good. Was I wouldn't lie about that. That's, I, the restaurant that one was Joe Fish. It was, really, it was really good. But I mean, if anyone has any, any more questions, I am uh, good. One more. Yeah, what? Were you were the first show on Nesson that wasn't a sporting event or a post-game interview? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, Nesson's unbelievable what they've done. They kind of grew up together when the World Series kind of happened in 04. They kind of popped and we all went with the network. I started on Nesson when it was uh, 800,000 paid subscribers. You know, subscribers. Subscribers, subscribers. I didn't miss that last <laughs> But no, Nesson's been great. I've been loyal to them. They've been loyal to me. They've allowed me to be in multiple networks. And, um, you know, they, 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 they've grown. Nesson's a top 10 Forbes company. They've made 400 million the last 10, million, uh, 10 years in a row. They're a juggernaut. The Red Sox and Bruins kid you not, did not buy. The Red Sox did not buy the Red Sox just for the Red Sox. They bought it for Nesson. Right? The network is a cash cow. And um, I don't even know, I don't even have pockets fly yet. You know what I mean? It's like, whoa, oh, park on the street, public parking. Thank you. <laughs> but real quick, I want you all to, to, to say hello and meet my wife over here. Say hi, Angel. She's so funny. You've got a tough job. Try living with me. But um, I do appreciate you guys all girls all watching the show and I just as, again when you watch it hopefully you laugh you smile uh, and you get you you're, you're entertained um, that's the whole purpose uh, we definitely try to uh, put a spin on what we do TV's changed over the years um, it really has and I think that now more than ever people who have personalities and can make people laugh and can do certain things it's, 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 it's valuable now it's all about like what can shock you the most and what's the most horrific thing you can look at it's just different it's just different. So I definitely was born in the wrong era. Imagine that. Drive home tonight and ask yourself this question. If you could be born in any era, what era would it be? I kind of like the no cell phones. Remember when we were kids, you'd do, oh, I missed him. It's the machine. Oh!